Thank you for joining us for the Q&A. Um, I just want to remind you that I will be repeating all of your questions so that everybody on stage can hear it and everybody in the theater can hear it. And I'm going to start the discussion and then throw it to you for your questions. With that, please help me welcome back to the stage the director of I Told You So, Geneva Elkan. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, as a co-writer with Chiara Barzini and Ilaria Bernardini, I'd love to begin by asking how the idea for this film came to be and what was the co-writing process like? Well, this film really stems from an anxiety um, from a summer in Rome where it was very, very hot. And I wondered, what if it's going to be hot like this forever? And we're going to live in a world that is yellow. And so I started talking to Chiara Barzini and Ilaria. And we started thinking about the film. And then COVID arrived. And, and so we sat, each of us, in our homes, in front of our computers, on Zoom, and we started writing this film. Um, and so it was really about, obviously about climate change, but it was a lot about addiction and how these two um, come together, basically. And you have a, um, there's many storylines in this film and many characters in this ensemble piece. And you have a huge cast of some of the most well-known actors in Europe and abroad. Um, how did you come to casting this film? And did you already have certain people in mind when you were writing the script? So most of the actors we had in mind as we were writing. So Valeria Golino as Pupa and... Alvaro Vaquer as Caterina, mm. Valeria Bruni Tedeschi as Gianna, and Ricardo Scamarcio as Ricardo. Um, and then we were looking for an American actor who could speak Italian too, which was not easy. And someone told me, you know, Danny Houston, he was born in Rome, and he speaks very good Italian. And so we were on Zoom, and he spoke Italian like a Roman. And so he came on, and then Greta Scacchi after him. And I think the most difficult part to cast really was the, the little boy, Max, and, uh, and um, Mila, the younger woman who's for the first time on screen. So just to find, you know, in the midst of these huge actors, actors that could work in the midst of that and then have them all work together, which was a feat. <laughs> was it complex getting the structure down and, and intertwining so many stories and slowly revealing how everybody was connected? Yeah, I think that took a long time just to, you know, to just build the story and to, to give the structure and to you know really understand how they you know how to link them and they're mainly all linked by bill the priest who in the end is the one who who's linked to every every character but the, the most difficult thing was really was to build the heat and how do you how do you you know how you show heat on film and how do you feel the heat and how do you prepare for you know, that was really very interesting to to create. And how do you shoot this that has to be continuous, but with actors that come in, you know, this can, you know, so we had to really do a system for the heat. And um, so I think that was actually the most complex. Did you, because the way that you actually pr depict heat here with the, gradients of uh, yellow and orange and the, um, the kind of muddled air quality as it goes on uh, is quite striking and immersive. So can you talk a little bit more about how you kind of visualized 
that and were there certain beats in the story that you're like, okay, now we're going into this other stage of... So we worked a lot with the DP, Vladan Radovich, on this idea. And I had seen photographs of China or you know other big cities very with a lot of pollution. And this was the way it looked, very hazy and orange. And so we talked with Vlad and how do we get from a winter light until the point of the end? And how do we divide the film? So we divided the film in four phases. And you know, they all, you know, and it had to show very slowly. You couldn't have like an abrupt change. It, so the light had to, the light and the haze had to grow slowly together as the, as the feelings of the characters and the emotions of the characters grow. I want to turn it over to the audience and your questions. <coughs> yes. In the beginning of the movie, there was a lot of work with animals. What was that process like? Well, so Pupa is, is the animal person in the film, and so there were the cats and the birds, and um, it was difficult for me because I'm not such a big cat person, so I just had to, you know, there was... There's a woman who's amazing, and she does this. She can, you know, talk to animals as, you know, and she's really great at directing them, basically. And, and so she brought the cats on set, and thank God Valeria Golino is a big cat person, so she, what they do is they basically put cat food on your neck, so you make sure that the cat stays there. And uh, all sorts of disgusting things I won't <laughs> go into. Um, but, uh, and so, and the birds, there was a great guy who, you know, had the same expertise with birds and could manage them. Great question. Yes. So the question was, uh, what struck him was some of the um, glamorous looks of some of the characters. And could you talk a little bit about uh, what inspired the fashion choices of the film? Well, I just think costume is very important. And it's very important to, you know, to tell you know, the character. So for instance, Mila, who is very self-conscious with her body, she's always very covered. And she's wearing you know, hoodies and loose clothes, and she doesn't really want to show her body. Jana, who is very mm, pious and supposedly, you know, against sex and against, is the, you know, dressed as a much more sexy woman. Um, Pupa is, uh, Pupa, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's just a very, you know, and in this film, th we had to undress them basically. So it's like, you know, having layers and layers in order to undress them and tell their story. Katerina is a, is a um, production designer, so she has like a more artistic way of dressing. Um, so I feel like it's a very important uh, way of of telling your characters just the way they dress. Because there are so many performers in this film and they have to build this rapport, did you do a lot of rehearsals or how did you actually um, build the relationship between them so we can see what ends up on screen? So the, the difficulty is that we had them not all together ever. Um, they were, we, we, they were still COVID when we were shooting. So it was like very, you know, 
very specific rules and and actors would come in and out. So we do, so you know, I take for instance, Danny Houston, Greta Skaki, they were, knew each other already from the 80s. So they were already, so I, I did some rehearsal with the two of them and rehearsal with Jan and Poop, you know, I take them as, but most of them knew each other already. So there was, it was already built in this, mm, this familiarity. Yes. So the question is, they kept feeling more stuck as the movie went on in kind of old relationships and trauma. And can you speak a little bit about this theme as the movie progresses? Anxiety. And anxiety, thank you. Yeah, well, yes, there is a lot of anxiety. Um, you know, this film is really about addiction and, and about denial um, and about trauma and, and about the different stages of it. So, you know, some people are stuck, like Bill, he's stuck in his trauma and he slowly, by the end of the film, will free himself from it. And some people cannot get rid of their trauma. And, uh, and that was interesting to me to just to, you know, to, to tell the different stages of trauma and of addiction and and also to show that you know you can recover but you could you can also just get stuck and and so yeah I, f I feel that the, the movie is about that yes uh-huh So can you talk a bit more about climate change and anxiety and, and how they maybe feed into each other or how they relate to each other in the film? So the film is set in January and it ends up being very, very hot. And uh, and so it's like an exaggerated idea of you know the way it could go. I mean, the the idea was also you know in a in a in a broad way to say to tell basically, you know, if you're an alcoholic, you drink and you know it's bad for you, but you're still drinking, right? And so it's like the world today. People keep on consuming and doing. They know it's not. You know, they tell us, you know, there's a climate change, you should stop doing this or that, but no one is stopping because we're just too used to, you know, the way our lives are. And so I, I wanted to draw a parallel between these two things. This is your second film. Um, <coughs> was the process very different from making your first? Oh, this was much more difficult. Uh, you know, this this was there was a lot of actors, and there was all this, uh, all the heat that had to be represented, and a lot of much more technical, much more complicated to make. And I think when you make your first film, you're free, and you're, um, I think you're. Yeah, free or you, you're not really as, maybe as self-conscious, I think. When you're doing your second film, you, you understand, you know, you, expectations and I don't know. I, I, f I felt uh, it was more interesting to make this film for me. The other one was more, 
like a ride. Well, you bring all of these big ideas to life uh, visually and through the script of the film. And I want to thank you for sharing the film with us. And thank you for your questions. Thank you.